war, conflict, a struggle for power. It's a tale as old as time. Today, we're diving deep into one of the most complex conflicts of modern times, the Ukraine war. There's a lot more to this story than meets the eye, and today, we're going to uncover some truths that are often left out of the mainstream narrative. Here's what the government doesn't want you to know about this conflict, its hidden truths, and how those in power are benefiting from it. But first, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an update from us. Behind every war, there's often a trail of money and economic interests. The Ukraine war is no exception. The full-scale invasion of Ukraine began on February 24th, 2022, and has displaced millions of Ukrainian families in the country and across the region triggering the biggest and fastest growing refugee crisis in Europe since the Second World War. A year later, more than 8 million people have fled from Ukraine into neighboring countries, and an estimated 6 million Ukrainians are internally displaced. As the war continues, it is critical to understand what Vladimir Putin really wants from Ukraine. The current conflict between Ukraine and Russia has deep historical roots, dating back to Ukraine's independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. For decades afterward, tensions simmered as Ukraine sought to move closer ties with the West, while Russia sought to maintain its influence. Ukraine gained independence after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, but close cultural and economic ties with Russia remained. Ukraine leaned towards joining the European Union for economic opportunities, while Russia saw Ukraine as part of its traditional sphere of influence. The conflict came to a head in 2013-2014 during the Maiden Revolution protests, sparked by Ukraine's decision to suspend plans to sign an EU trade deal. Russia opposed Ukraine joining the EU. In early 2014, Russia annexed Crimea after sending troops into the peninsula, a move Western countries condemned as illegal. Russia then supported separatist proxies in eastern Ukraine's Donbas region, sparking an armed conflict that has claimed over 13,000 lives since 2014. A ceasefire in 2015 calmed the conflict, but tensions remained between Ukraine seeking closer NATO and EU ties, while Russia wanted to maintain influence. This history of tensions and Russia's desire to keep Ukraine within its sphere built up to the current full-scale invasion of Ukraine in 2022. Putin now seeks to take control of Ukraine and potentially restore it as part of Russia. The conflict is seen as a clash between Russia trying to maintain influence over its former Soviet territories and Ukraine's goal of escaping from Russia's grip and charting an independent westward course. Now, let's talk about the real cost of this war. When we think about the cost of a war, we often think about the financial burden, which is significant. Volodymyr Zelensky increased the payment for the military to seven times the average salary in Ukraine. 100,000 hryvnias, which translates to 2,200 pounds monthly to military personnel who hold weapons. The war, as it has turned out, is well into its second year, and the Ukrainian president is faced with the costs. So far, billions have been spent on military operations, support for displaced persons, and rebuilding damaged infrastructure. But there's a deeper, more profound cost. The human cost. Thousands of lives have been lost, and millions displaced families have been torn apart and entire communities obliterated. The psychological trauma inflicted on civilians trapped in this war zone is immeasurable. Moreover, the future generation's potential is being deeply affected, with children missing out on education and facing severe psychological trauma. The UN has confirmed 8,006 civilian deaths, including 487 children, victims of heavy artillery shelling, missiles, and airstrikes, often on their homes. The UN always caveats that the actual figures are considerably higher because there are many places it cannot reach. The Ukrainian government is reluctant to disclose military casualties, but some estimates suggest as many as 100,000 casualties. Around 3,500 Ukrainian soldiers are currently being held as prisoners of war, with multiple reports of torture and starvation. Tens of thousands of civilians and soldiers alike have suffered often life-changing injuries, Foreign doctors volunteering in Ukraine have described horrific First World War-type injuries that were worse than what they had seen in Iraq. There are many reports of sexual violence with victims as young as four. Behind each of these numbers are many human stories, like three-month-old Kira, her mother Valeria, and grandmother Lyudmila, who were killed when a Russian missile ripped through their apartment block in Odessa or 10-year-old Yana, who survived the bombing of Kramatorsk train station but lost her right leg below the knee, her left foot, and her mother. Or Roman Ratushny, a well-known civic activist 
who with others his age volunteered for the army after the invasion and was killed in combat in Izium a month before his 25th birthday. The invasion of Ukraine has caused a huge economic blow, with $137.8 billion of damage inflicted on its infrastructure and most influential industries. This includes the complete destruction of 344 bridges, 440 educational facilities, 173 hospitals, and hundreds of thousands of homes, while many more buildings have suffered extensive damage. Agricultural products, Ukraine's other major export, have also been significantly hit. 26% of cultivatable land has either been lost or damaged or is contaminated by mines. As a result, wheat and sunflower harvests in 2022 were down 40% compared to the previous year, and a further drop in production is expected in 2023. In a country that was the breadbasket of the world, exporting enough before the war to feed 400 million people around the globe, the World Food Program now provides food assistance to 3 million people monthly, and approximately 35% of Ukraine's population is estimated to be suffering from insufficient food consumption. The steel industry, which before the war constituted a third of the value of all Ukrainian exports and was one of the country's biggest employers, collapsed in 2022. Steel production fell by over 70% last year and will not be able to reach pre-war levels in the near future. Azovstal in Mariupol, one of the largest steel plants, was completely destroyed. The Arcelor Middle facility in Kriyevyev Ri, which was recently upgraded with a $5 billion investment, is now running at a quarter of its production capacity due to energy shortages and transport issues since it is unable to ship goods via sea. This is especially concerning when considering that about half of Donbass, Ukraine's industrial hub, was seized by Russia after 2014. It is estimated that almost half of the businesses in Ukraine are no longer functioning, resulting in a dramatic decrease in tax revenue, while the need for defense expenditure has increased. This has had a domino effect, leading to the advertisement market falling apart and media organizations finding it difficult to remain afloat. All of Ukraine has become an active war zone. Air travel has stopped, and it's hard to travel internationally. You have to go through Poland to get to other cities. In most cities, including Kiev, people still go to work, and shops and restaurants are open, but everyone is subject to a curfew from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. To conserve energy, streetlights are kept off, so it is eerily dark and quiet. Air raid sirens, now often first heard through a special mobile app, and the accompanying sounds of anti-aircraft fire are so frequent that many people have become numb to them and often don't bother going to their designated underground shelters. But drones and rockets do get through air defenses and continue killing civilians in their homes, as they did a month ago in Dnipro, killing 46 people, injuring 80, and leaving 400 homeless when their nine-story apartment building was hit. These attacks also cause blackouts and heating and water shortages due to the intentional targeting of critical energy infrastructure, with 50% of such infrastructure damaged, seized, or completely destroyed. In particular, those living near the front in places like Kherson experience daily bombardments. The World Health Organization has reported that the trauma of living in a war zone has put approximately 10 million Ukrainians at risk of various mental health issues, such as stress, anxiety, depression, alcohol abuse, and PTSD. Especially affected are the many displaced individuals, as well as children and soldiers, who may exhibit symptoms such as insomnia, flashbacks, and panic attacks. The head of Ukraine's only military rehabilitation center for PTSD sufferers believes that the country requires an additional 100 such facilities. Those now inhabiting areas that Russia has seized control of are witnessing their attempts to eliminate Ukrainian culture and identity, similar to what happened in Donbass and Crimea after 2014. Russian language signage has been put up instead of Ukrainian, and street names have gone back to their Soviet Union days, and even historical monuments, including those dedicated to the Holodomor, have been removed. It is of great concern that Russia has established 43 camps and other facilities to re-educate Ukrainian young people. The Humanitarian Research Lab of the Yale School of Public Health estimates that no less than 6,000 kids, and probably more, have gone through these Russian-leaning programs. Also, hundreds of Ukrainian minors have been adopted by Russian families. What do you feel about Russia's plan to take in and teach Ukrainian children? Please leave your opinion in the comments section and hit the like button if you're enjoying the video. Russia's aggression triggered the greatest European refugee crisis since World War II. 
close to 8 million Ukrainian refugees now live outside their homeland, and a further 5 million are without a place to call home within their country. In the short term, this has caused hardship and uncertainty, particularly for many women and children. Men under the age of 60 aren't allowed to leave without special permission. It is expected that this mass exodus may aggravate Ukraine's already dire population problems in the long run. This conflict is shaping up to be one of the most expensive wars ever. Although World War II was relatively short, it was still the most expensive war ever. It cost a staggering $4 trillion, and the conflict between Russia and Ukraine may follow in its footsteps. Since gaining independence in 1991, Ukraine's population has dropped from 51 million to an estimated 43.5 million. Therefore, the return of refugees to the country will be essential for its sustained economic growth. Many have already gone back, and many more have said that they will return once the conflict ends. However, the more time that passes, the more likely it is that Ukrainians will settle in other countries, looking for higher wages and enrolling their children in schools. Ukraine has implemented a range of measures to counter Russia. Both military and non-military strategies are being used to make it more difficult for Russia to achieve its goal. Ukrainian soldiers are protecting important cities from Russian attacks. Even though Ukraine is outnumbered and outgunned, its forces have been able to impede the Russian offensive and cause it to suffer losses. President Volodymyr Zelensky has been working hard to gain international aid and assistance for Ukraine, calling upon other nations to send weapons, money, supplies, and to impose sanctions on Russia. Numerous countries have answered his call. The U.S. has presented Ukraine with over $1 billion worth of gear, like Javelin and Stinger missiles, armor-plated cars, ammunition, body armor, and helmets. The European Union has sent out billions of euros of weaponry from its member countries, such as the U.K., France, Germany, and Poland. Ukraine is actively using social media and the international press to raise attention to Russia's alleged war crimes to gain support and counter Russian propaganda about the invasion. Ukraine may not have the same military strength as Russia, but they have resorted to cyber attacks against the Russian government, media, and banking websites. The country's technology sector is sizable, and many skilled hackers have offered their assistance to bolster these cyber campaigns. Despite the invasion by Russia, Ukrainian national unity has grown stronger, with many people supporting Zelensky's leadership and military efforts. Symbols of national identity, such as the Ukrainian flag, have gained renewed significance. To counter Russia's occupation, Ukraine has implemented both military and non-military strategies, but it is still uncertain what the final outcome will be as the struggle continues. However, the costs of war are always higher than the benefits. Lives lost, infrastructure destroyed, societies torn apart. These are the real costs of war. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching, and consider watching our other videos right here.